How's it going? This is Mark Major at Pandemic Performance. We're out here at King Hammers with HP Tuners. Today we're going to give you a brief rundown on Power Sports Tuning, specifically on the Razor Pro R, to kind of walk through some of the more basic things that a lot of customers ask for on the tuning side, as well as go through some overall enhancements that are very popular for out here at Desert Running at King Hammers. So let's get into it. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to want to have the HP Tuners MPVI3 module and the Polaris adapter cable, both available on our website or hptuners.com. So you're going to take the adapter cable, you're going to simply plug it in, the module here. This side is going to go on the, the diagnostic connector on the Polaris vehicles. Specifically on this vehicle, Pro R's and Pro XP's are up underneath the steering wheel. So you're going to come in, plug that side in, and take the other side, plug it into your USB cable. From there, you're going to open up VCM Editor and HP Tuners. You're going to want to make sure to be on the latest beta on that. The regular HP Tuners does not work on Power Sports. The latest beta supports all Power Sports tuning. Once VCM Editor is open, you're going to come up here. Make sure you're on Gather Info. And once we are on Gather Info, it's going to bring up the vehicle's information. You want to click Read Entire. What this is going to do, that's going to reach out to the HP Tuner server. That's going to pull down a virtual read from the server. You're going to want to take that and save it for what vehicle it is. Then you know, with Power Sports tuning and HP Tuners tuning in general, is you're going to want to have a Wi-Fi or internet connection. Specifically out here at King of Hammers, we're connected to our Star Lake module with high-speed Wi-Fi, and this lets us connect to the HP Tuner server out here in the desert to ensure seamless operation to pull down those files. So let's have the file open. This is a stock file, so it's going to have all your basic parameters. Um, a very popular thing that we get asked for on uh, Power Sports Tuning is how do I start my vehicle without having to press the brake pedal? So you're going to come in on the Systems tab under General, under Start Requirements. You're going to want to come in and you're just going to want to set these bits to zero. And this allows you to start your vehicle without the brake in park or neutral and without um, having to be in park for that. So this will let you start in gear with the brake pedal, which is a nice feature. So once that's done, the next common question we get is, hey, my vehicle's running hot, how do I turn my uh, cooling fans down? How do I make the vehicle run cooler? So on this specific vehicle, we're gonna take the on cooling temperature and we'll set that lower to 186 and 184. We wanna be sure to have a little bit of hysteresis in here, um, just to make sure the fan doesn't run continuously all the time. Uh, it's also important to set that value higher than the thermostat temperature. Um, if it is lower than thermostat temperature, what's going to happen is thermostat's going to be closed and your fan's going to run continuously and drain your battery. Not a good thing. Next, you're going to want to get into your duty cycle map based on coolant temperature. You're going to want to lower that and just kind of apply a nice little blend factor using this blend feature here. Handy thing. Next up, a lot of people ask, hey, you know, my vehicle's already hot. What do I do? Uh, how do I run my radiator with the vehicle off and um, key on? It's going to be this parameter right here. We'll typically set this to 195 and 190 respectively. This will let the fan run for about 15 to 20 seconds once the key is on, engine is off, just to allow things some um, time to cool off without unnecessarily draining your battery. So that is how we lower cooling fan temperature on the vehicle. Next, we're going to go into Speedo. A lot of people put bigger tires on these. These come factory at 32s. Um, a lot of people run 35s or 37s, or in some case, you run 54 inch tires on portals. Um, in that case, you're going to want to increase this. Um, typically, for a 30% um, you know, tire size increase, we'll increase that number by roughly 30%. This will correct your speedometer for your tire size. Next, you're going to want to go to the different speed limiters. A very popular thing on these is to change some of the vehicle speed limiter parameters. This parameter here doesn't necessarily do a lot, but it's good practice to push this out of the way. And max vehicle speed, we'll set that up out of the way. Same thing, speed limit versus gear. Now, I want to be careful with these because these do prevent you from bouncing off your rev limiter in a lot of cases. So you are, you are going to be relying solely on your engine rev limiter. Uh, just be careful with those ones. Um, they are there from factory for a reason, but if you do choose to modify them, just be mindful that um, you're going to want to make sure to look at the engine speed limiters as well. So once that is done, we will get into the next steps on how to remove the brake throttle override. Another popular feature, a lot of guys out there like to do burnouts or what have you, or even in racing, you don't want to have, uh, you know, you want to do two foot driving. You're going to want to come in the airflow tab and go to electronic throttle. And you're going to want to take this RPM threshold and bump this up to 8,800 RPM or higher, um, even 9,000 RPM, and take the speed thr threshold and push that out of the way. And then one final thing to fully remove brake throttle override is you're going to want to go into the diagnostic tab 
and you're going to want to remove the brake throttle interaction fault. If you don't remove this fault and you do try to two-foot drive, even though it will not limit you on power, it'll still flash the mill on the dash. So we're going to want to go through and turn that off as well. As you can see, there's a lot of codes here um, in the stock ECU. So this one is already disabled, but to be able to start without the gear um, and brake pedal press, you're going to make sure that is disabled. So here you're going to want to take this code, P158, brake throttle interaction, you want to disable that. And then there's also a lot of people that often ask about misfire detection. Um, we don't recommend turning misfire detection off, um, but if you are having misfire detection issues or you change your primary or secondary clutches or you change to um, an exhaust that has a different exhaust configuration, um, you would simply go into here and disable these as well. You're gonna to wanna to take all, all four of these, disable every cylinder and do all the overall random misfire detected disabled. Again, we don't recommend turning these off, but if you choose to uh, have these turned off, you just want to make sure that they uh, they stay off. So, okay. Uh, next, for some of the other nitty gritty things, um, max throttle versus RPM, make sure that throttle opens up all the way. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get any more airflow, since effective watt typically will occur at a different spot. But if you want to make sure that throttle is opening 100%, that's what you would do. And lastly, a lot of people ask for, how do I make my vehicle more snappy? Typically what you're gonna to wanna to do is go into your electronic throttle maps here. Uh, one thing to note is uh, most of the other power sports vehicles will simply have a two dimension array on here that will have accelerator pedal percent versus throttle percent. Some of the newer models went to a torque based system. So this will actually be engine torque at the crankshaft. So you'll go through and simply modify these um, to what the modified engine torque values will be in the new configuration and you'll simply go through here and apply these blend factors and this will give you more perceived throttle response if you choose to do so. One important thing to do is if you do choose to modify your pedal maps it is critical that you take your base pedal map changes and you apply them to the monitoring side. If you don't do this what's going to happen is there are things in the background um, in the CCU that We'll do safety monitoring and it will pretty much force you into a force idle or limp home state if you do not change all these. This is a critical, all these must match. So that's kind of the basics on overall power sports tuning, some of the diagnostic sides, some of the basic features, how to start at park or neutral without brake, and as well as how to do vehicle speed limiters and the rest of the tuning. Lastly, what we're gonna to wanna to do is once you make your changes, you are going to want to save your file so in this case, we'll just do save as, whatever your new tune, tune file is gonna be. Tune, save that. You wanna click the right button, show license options. You wanna click specific, click yes. And it is gonna be critical that you do a right entire on this, not right calibration. You're gonna to wanna to click right vehicle. It's gonna process the flash data and then it is going to write the vehicle. This process usually takes about two to three minutes. As you can see, it's going through the right procedure. Once that's complete, it'll say process complete, and then we will do a key cycle on the vehicle key. Let the ECU go to sleep. Typically, it's best practice to wait until the, the halos and the headlights go off and the taillights go off. Um, typically, it takes about 30 seconds after key off just to ensure that the ECU is fully asleep. Let's everything go into reset, and then we will key on and start the vehicle. And it's a good check, um, just to make sure some of these changes did take place in the tune. Um, we'll throw the shifter in either park or neutral, and simply turn the key and see if it starts without having to push the brake. All right, so you can see that flashing is almost complete. Goes through a validation check. Make sure everything took the flash as expected. Right is complete, so now we will take the key. We will key off, let the vehicle power cycle, and 30 seconds later, we will start it up. So the next step, once you do flash your vehicle, let's say you wanna do some data logging, we'll go in, open up VCM scanner. Again, it is important to have the latest VCM beta package open as regular uh, stable HP tuners will not work on power sports application, primarily because the CAN spec is different between the two, between automotive and power sports. So in this case, we've got our power sports specific VCM scanner set up. 
it is it is imperative that you do not select any of the SAE channels. So when you go in and you go to add channels, you're gonna see a host of different SAE things. We will not select those. So make sure just to have the power sports specific channels. So we'll come in and now the vehicle is fully flash. We're gonna put the vehicle in neutral and we're gonna key on. We're gonna hit the blue car. Um, that's gonna pull the vehicle, get everything set up for data logging, and then we'll start the vehicle and capture a data log. So now we will start the vehicle. No brake required, starts as expected. And now we can log the various channels on here. So you can see you've got your basics. You've got RPM, airflow, throttle body adaptation, misfire counters, cylinder advance, knock retard, pretty much all your basic things to kind of go through and uh, see what you want to log. So with that, that's kind of the overall rundown of how to tune your power sports vehicle with HP tuners. Again, it's been great. Market pandemic performance. Feel free to reach out to us for all your tuning needs. Thank you.